lovely and good morning and welcome to the class thank you for connecting the plan for today is to begin with the introduction document for the grammar to explain the grammar concepts after the introduction of the grammar we will continue with the article from Saturday the article is a review from a movie from the Rolling Stone magazine and that's the plan for today after the introduction to continue with the article and after the article we have the possibility to continue with phrase adverbs and idioms as well so that's the plan and we have another activity in relation to grammar uh, also so I hope you have a nice start of the week I hope your weekend was nice I hope you can understand me perfect and I apologize if it's difficult to understand me and if um, you have a lot of difficulty with the class the class maybe is difficult we have lots of people with different levels of English and from different countries so it's a challenge for me to keep in mind people's ability and I hope and I believe everybody can learn something from the class that is the plan um, and I hope we have no problem with the connection with the internet with technology and um, we have family at home so same with you I'm sure so hopefully there's no big disruption it's possible to participate in the class if you want to connect with zoom it's possible to participate I can show you the ID here so this is the code for the meeting if you want to participate for me probably it is better because the more people in the zoom meeting the less probability the meeting will disconnect so zoom have the policy to disconnect after 40 minutes of idle time with nobody in the meeting so if you want to connect it's better for me that's the code um so yes it's the start of the sixth week and this is the sixth week of the free classes i think we are making progress i think you are learning a little some people have attended most weeks and other people are new so welcome everybody if you are new and I hope you can follow the class very easily and I hope you can understand very quickly and very easily. The structure is very similar every day with the intention to allow and permit people to join when you want to uh, follow the class. It's a good opportunity for me to work again. So I stopped in May working. Ability to continue again and it's a very good opportunity for me to work and um, also for you a lot of people have lost work and lost the job so it's a good opportunity to help and um, that's my plan at the moment to try to help your objective probably is to learn English obviously to understand native speakers because it's very difficult to understand native speakers and my job is to help um, especially with economic situation you want the best economic option and that's my intention as well probably I will need your support so I will need your financial support I am sure at the end if you want to make a little contribution or a little donation it's possible with um, two possibilities Bizum in Spain Revolut it's possible if you are happy at the end with a small contribution of maybe one or two euro or PayPal on the right and my bank details on the left so there are a few options and I am sure to continue working this way to continue providing free classes I am sure I will need your support so I hope you can be generous and I hope you can support me frequently because it's a big help for me and it will allow me to continue working in this way because my intention is to help people especially who have difficulty with uh, English and who have difficulty financially so that's my intention but at the same time hopefully you can help me okay so I'll try to share my screen begin because every day it's more or less the same document and you can see the document on the left and I'll try to make my zoom image a little bit bigger so everybody can see um, this is the document on the left it's the introduction and for me it's very very important there are three areas that are very important in relation to the introduction document the first area is use of English the second area are the tenses the different tenses we have 
and the third area is grammar so I don't know why it's not possible to make my screen a little bit bigger I'll try again to make the screen a bit bigger because it's better to see it a bit uh, there we go okay perfect yeah so this document is the most important the first area is use of English this is a very important category the second area are tenses you can see and the third area at the bottom is grammar uh, ideas and other grammar topics okay so at the beginning it's fundamental to explain the technical vocabulary for example substantive adjective adverb past perfect present perfect modal verbs phrasal verbs idioms at the beginning it's very very important to introduce the concepts because during the class I mention and I use the concepts a lot and for this reason it's especially important you understand the concept and you understand the idea of the technical vocabulary okay probably a lot of people have a good understanding of grammar a lot of people have a good uh, control a good concept of the foundation and the ideas in grammar but still if you are a master if you are intermediate if you're a beginner this area is still important in my opinion okay so the first part are accents in English we have a lot of different accents around the world in Ireland we have an accent in England in London Newcastle Liverpool Scotland United States California New York different parts of the United States have very different accents and in Ireland it's the same in England it's the same and this is a big difficulty to learn English probably you have a difficulty to understand people on the radio television series movies and in ordinary conversation in day-to-day -day life supermarket shop you probably have difficulty to understand people quickly okay so in Ireland for example for me you need to be a little careful I have some possible pronunciation uh, characteristics for example the U it's possible in Dublin we the U is very strong Dublin butter bus and phonetically it probably should be butter Dublin bus so the U is possibly strong for me the TH is also very possibly strong for me the TH in Ireland and for me sometimes has the pronunciation of a D for example this that these those for me sometimes has the pronunciation this that these and those so that's very particular um, characteristic for my pronunciation so just be a little careful also the OU is possible for example house mouse the OU sometimes is very strong in Ireland and for me also but this is part of learning English it's not incorrect it's not wrong it's just part of learning English because we have different accents everywhere Australia New Zealand Canada so it's good practice for you to be aware and to be conscious and try to identify okay the next two areas for me are maybe the most important okay so phrasal verbs is the first concept and phrasal verbs are very particular to English I think other languages do not have phrasal verbs and the concept of the phrasal verb is a verb and a preposition and it's possible literal significance but also it's possible a double and completely different significance and that's the idea of a phrasal verb and we have a lot of phrasal verbs and one example is the verb to set the verb to set is very flexible it's like to fix or to put so set is very flexible but combined with the preposition up the significance is to establish or to organize for example set up a company set up a business set up a meeting set up the computer so it's like to start to organize and to establish so that's one perfect example of a phrasal verb and we have a lot of phrasal verbs we have thousands and thousands of phrasal verbs and they are very common in conversation they are very important we use them every moment every day with family with friends formal situations informal situations business professional social all the time we use phrasal verbs and they are very very quick and for this reason they are difficult to identify and difficult to catch so for me they are probably the biggest area to focus on and the biggest area to analyze okay I think it will be a big advantage for you
okay um the subtitles are available for facebook if you want to select the subtitles for me hopefully you can read the subtitles and follow my conversation and the captions the majority are correct but also there are some errors with the captions but it probably will help anyway okay the next area are idioms so idioms are like expressions and again we use idioms all the time in conversation we use idioms with family with friends all the time idioms are a big part of English and for this reason I think idioms along with phrasal verbs are two very very big areas to understand particularly conversational English because grammar is a different idea a lot of people are familiar with grammar to study but for me phrasal verbs and idioms are a big part and during the class I try to identify phrasal verbs and I try to teach and I show you and identify the important uh, uses of English okay conversation and pronunciation is also very important so to improve English conversation is very important to practice I hope you have the opportunity I hope you have the ability to speak in English regularly today it's very possible on the internet you have a lot of options to find people to practice English this is a big part to improve English and during the class yes it's possible to connect and participate during the class with speaking and that is available for you with zoom and I can hopefully help a little with that okay pronunciation so in English we have some irregular phonetics with pronunciation and for this reason pronunciation is very important also to learn there are some irregular pronunciation uh, situations in English and during the class I try to help and to try to show the irregular and the difficult problems with pronunciation okay um, and that's very very important the next area is the tenses okay so in English we have different tenses and similar in every language you have the idea do you speak in the present Do you speak in the past Do you speak in the future Do you speak in the continuous the past simple the perfect so every language has different tenses and today now at the beginning it's very important to introduce and explain the concepts of the different times in English because in the class it's very important to be aware so the first concept is the simple we have the present simple which is one action you do regularly and normally in the present simple for example I drink I go I eat I wash that's the present simple the past simple is usually the action completed in the past and it's absolutely finished it's completely over and sometimes it's irregular we have a lot of irregular verbs in the past and this is a big big difficulty but the regular verbs is usually ed for example look I look in the present and the past regular I looked the verb to eat in the present I eat the past is irregular I ate so we have a lot of irregular verbs and that's a big difficulty and a big big area of English the irregular verbs So that's the past simple present simple we also have the future simple there are two possibilities for the future simple I will eat I will drink I will go and the second possibility I am going to eat I am going to go I am going to make so there are two possibilities for the future simple the next idea is the continuous we have the present continuous which is the period in the present you do the activity continuously and the construction is the subject I you he she we you they the verb to be auxiliary extra verb to be and the gerund the ing form of the verb so the construction i am eating i am drinking i am talking in the present continuous similar concept in the past continuous except the verb to be is the past i was eating i was drinking i was uh, looking okay and the future continuous is a similar idea the period of time in the future that you do the activity continuously i will be eating i will be going i will be drinking okay the next idea is the perfect so we have two or three tenses with the perfect the most common are the past perfect the present perfect and the future perfect so the present perfect is usually the action in the past it's completed but it is relevant and related to now okay so for example again 
the same example in the verb to eat I have eaten so the construction is the subject extra verb have and the participle I have eaten my breakfast this morning it's finished it's completed but it is relevant and related to now because at the moment I am not hungry so that's the present perfect I have eaten my breakfast okay I have spoken to my friend it's finished it's completed but it is relevant to now because we continue the conversation the past perfect is usually the action and the period in the past before another action in the past simple and the construction is I had you had we had plus the participle I had eaten my breakfast before my friend contacted me so the purpose of the past perfect is usually before another action in the past simple as the present perfect the past perfect and it's possible the future perfect I will have eaten my dinner when my friend will come okay so that's the concept of the simple the continuous and the perfect the next idea that's important is the infinitive so the infinitive of the verb in English is the base and the foundation and normally it's two to eat to go to drink to have to talk to meet infinitive okay and during the class I use and mention the infinitive a lot okay the conditionals in the books and for studying the conditionals the theory is very heavy and the theory is a little strict and a little difficult in the book we have the zero conditional first conditional second conditional third conditional mixed conditional and for me honestly the theory is very hard and the rules are very very strict and I think it's a very very difficult area to study and to master but in my opinion in reality it's more flexible and it's less strict that's my opinion okay really it's related to the word if and the different times so if it rains today I will not go out if I went to the match yesterday I would have seen the goal okay so it depends on the different time and the different tense but really it's connected to if and the hypothetical situation but the theory is a little difficult and the theory in the book is very uh, strict and a lot of rules but in reality I think it's a little more open and a little more flexible especially in conversation okay the next area are the active and the passive and when you want to progress with English when you really want to increase your level I recommend a range and a variety of your grammar so you should try to use a range and a variety of the tenses simple past continuous perfect conditionals and the active and the passive is another tense so the concept of the active is usually the subject the verb and the object it's the ordinary structure that is the active and then the passive we change the position of the object and the subject so you change positions you also introduce a verb to be and also the participle of the original verb so the first example I drink the coffee so that's the active subject verb object I drink the coffee and the passive we change the position the coffee and me but we introduce a verb to be so the coffee is participle drunk by me that's just one example and the idea of the active and the passive I think is similar in other languages and it's very useful and very good level of English okay so the final category from my introduction is just grammar concepts that we haven't mentioned so for example a noun and a substantive you need to be sure and you need to be aware of the idea and the concept of a noun and a substantive basically it's a person a place or a thing so my hand substantive pen television light football car substantive 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 every substantive you need an article in English we have two articles we have a and the okay a is the indefinite article a house a car a book but it is possible two pronunciations a or a so you have two possible pronunciations that's the indefinite article and the definite article is the specific the cat the bus the car the road okay and that is the definite article there is one rule when the noun when the substantive begins with a vowel a e i o u it's necessary the article is a n for example apple begins with a vowel so it's necessary an an apple for the article that's the article substantive we also have the adjective so the 
function and the job of the adjective is to describe the substantive okay and the position of the adjective is before the substantive for example an apple but a, a big apple okay so you change because the next word is not the vowel so the article changes for example a house a big house so the position of the adjective is before the substantive and that's different compared to Portuguese and it's different compared to Spanish Thai, Vietnamese, I'm not sure the position of the adjective, but it's important, the concept in English, okay? The next idea is the adverb. So the function of the adverb is to describe the verb, the verb to drink, to go, to talk, and the adverb is typically L-Y, quickly, slowly, happily, rapidly. So to drink, quickly, to talk, slowly, okay? So the adverb's function is to supplement and describe the verb that's the adverb okay modal verbs in english we have a particular category of modal verbs and we use modal verbs all the time very quickly we use modal verbs uh, very frequently and they are fundamental and they are part of every conversation in english the modal verbs the first modal verb is can and it's related to ability i can play the piano I can run 10 kilometers, it's my ability. Also permission, can I go to the shop? Can I enter the room? And yes, you can, yes, you have the permission, yes, you have the, the possibility, okay? So that's the modal verb can. And the next one is could, may, and might are for possible situations or options. Could, may, and might are almost the same. May and might are probably just a little more formal and a little more polite but they have basically the same significance I could go to the cinema I may go to the cinema I might go to the cinema it's an option and it is a possibility okay could may and might very common and very important shall is probably more formal and more is probably older English but it has a similar significance of will and it's typical for a question shall we have dinner shall we go to the cinema shall we contact our friend it's a question will will we have dinner or should okay so it's a little flexible significance is similar to will and the significance is similar to should should is very typical for recommendation and advice so i recommend something to you i give you my advice it's possible to use the verb should you should speak to your friend you should watch this movie you should read this book so should typical for recommendation and for advice the next verb is almost the same significance the pronunciation is a little difficult because the G is silent so the pronunciation is ought to and the significance is should so you ought to read this book you ought to watch this movie you ought to contact your friend and the significance is you should my recommendation my advice okay so very very important the next modal verb, which is very common also, is for obligation, must. And the U, it's possible in Ireland, must. But phonetically, it's must. In the book, you phonet your phonetics. But must is obligation. So you must collect the children. You must read this book. You must make the food. It's obligation. You have no choice. And the significance is practically exactly the same as have to. So obligation and you have no choice. Okay. The rule the big important rule with the modal verbs the next verb with the modal verb is the infinitive to eat to go to drink but it's always necessary to eliminate two that's the big big rule with the modal verb and it's a common common obvious very strong error when you make the error because the correct structure is modal verb and verb eliminating two so correct can go could have should see might visit that's correct and the incorrect and the typical error is can to go may to see might to have so that's the error and the rule is it's necessary to eliminate two in the next verb after the modal okay prepositions are a big big part of english prepositions we have maybe 150 prepositions in english and they are related to movement direction and position so speak i speak but direction i speak to you okay travel but direction i travel to ireland 
So the prepositions are very important for direction, for movement and position. So the book is on the table, the book is under the table, over the table, beside the table, in front of, behind, below. So we have a lot of prepositions that are very important to describe the movement, to describe the direction and to describe the position and the location. Also prepositions are a big part of phrasal verbs. So the phrasal verb you have the verb and also a preposition and usually the preposition is associated with emotion. For example up is positive, up is creation, up is happy and of course negative down is sad, down is negative, down is destruction. So there is a big association with emotions and the preposition and the movement, okay? And we will see more of that. The next area is a big area and there's a lot of confusion and a lot of errors in this area of the object pronoun, the possessive pronoun, the subject pronoun. And here is the example for the possessive adjective my hat your hat his hat her hat our hat so adjective my so that's one example my hat but then we have the pronoun the possessive pronoun the hat is mine so it is my hat but the hat is mine and then we have the object pronoun so give the hat to me so there are three different categories that are very very commonly used we use them all the time and i recommend that you are very very clear with the difference the big typical confusion is he she his hers him her that's the big big difference and the big difficulty in the masculine and the feminine with he and she him and her and his and hers so that is very common error and i have heard this error in probably the majority of people that learn english it's a big big area it's very simple but it is very obvious and it is necessary to really tighten and to control that rule to improve a lot, okay? Um, the difference between this, that, these and those is very important. It depends on singularity and it depends on plural, plural singularity and position. So for example, this is here, this pen, that is there in singular, this, that, singular, these is plural here and those is plural away that's the concept and the difference between the four and they are very common as well there is a difference between another other the other and the others okay another is typically before the substantive in the singular another coffee another day another person and other is typically before the substantive in the plural other days other weeks other years so another for singular and other for plural that's the general general rule and it's very important there is a possibility that other when you have a choice or a selection of two things do you want this chocolate cake or do you want that other chocolate cake okay so when you have a choice of two things and you select the second choice it's very typical to say that other okay that is important and finally it is possible that others and that is for the group of people so do you want to travel to Italy with us or do you want to travel to Italy with the others, the group? Okay, that is very important and very interesting. Also, the construction of the question is a big part of English, and we can do that in the future. But finally, I would recommend that you are familiar with the concept of the suffixes and the prefixes. So for me, a big piece of advice and a big help would be for you to really understand the concept and to understand the idea of a suffix, the, the letters at the end of a verb, or the letters at the end of a word, which represent a noun, an adjective, an adverb. So you need to identify the typical suffixes that are at the end of the words, and also the typical prefixes that are at the beginning of the word, that show you and identify the form of the family. Is it the verb? Is it the noun? Is it the adjective? Is it the adverb? One example, A-N-C-E, the suffix ANC is typical substantive. For example, importance is the substantive. IZE is typical suffix for the verb to realize, to monetize, to fantasize. They're the typical verbs with the suffix IZE. ABLE is typical for the adjective, manageable, was one example. 
ly is the typical suffix for the adverb uh, quickly slowly incredibly so you need to be familiar and begin to start recognizing the suffixes it's a big help in exams and it's a typical confusion again a lot of people maybe 50 percent of people that's just from my experience confuse the substantive and the adjective with this suffix okay okay so that is just the introduction for today of course writing is very important and i recommend you try to regularly practice your writing and regularly practice your speaking and regularly practice your listening because writing is a big big part some people have very good english speaking some people have very good understanding of english and at the same time the level of writing is completely different so lots of people have different abilities and again to improve in total it's important you continue to practice your writing it's available with me if you want to send writing i can correct your writing and for me it would be good for example today you can write the topic of the weekend you can write about the topic of this week whatever you want and it's possible to send i can correct and show you everybody tomorrow that's a really good activity and a really good possibility and of course exam preparation is very popular as well i have a lot of uh, experience working with a lot of people preparing for the cambridge exams the first certificate advanced certificate proficiency and also the ielts and that's a different class it's a different idea but if you have the interest it's a possibility to uh, create classes and to have classes specific for the exams okay super so that is the introduction for today now we will continue with this article it's a review from the rolling stone magazine and a review of a movie called the dig i think on netflix perhaps or a series maybe not a movie but the vocabulary is probably advanced and you might have difficulty to understand all of the text it's quite high level but at the same time i try to keep in mind that you have di that people have different levels in the class um, but it's very very good and yet on saturday we started this article and we looked at the first page of the vocabulary and the grammar and today we will continue with the second part of the the review so again the style of a review is colorful the style of a review is to entertain the reader so for this reason the vocabulary is colorful the vocabulary is entertaining and the vocabulary is rich so it's a good uh, activity to see the different quality and the different levels of vocabulary okay so that was the first part yesterday we almost finished the first paragraph and i will start here um with widow okay so this is where we stopped yesterday and i will just begin the pronunciation for uh, to practice the pronunciation so edith pretty carrie mulligan a widow of some taste and renown has hired a local named basil brown ralphines to help her locate any potential findings the gentleman is not an archaeologist okay as he's quick to point out he's merely an amateur excavator with a deep knowledge of history a shyness and modesty in his manner and a seemingly endless supply of dirt specked tweed suit jackets okay <coughs> excuse me so that is just the pronunciation for the paragraph i will continue with the next paragraph just with the pronunciation so edith feels that the land on her estate may be home to a viking burial ground basil thinks there's something even older lurking under there under there as various posh accents bump up against working class ones they eventually do discover quite a trove of corroded centuries old flotsam and jetsam which attracts the attention of no less than the british museum it will eventually be known as the sutton who treasure and were this not lifted from the real life discovery of a major historical find you would have hoped that's the conditional you would have hoped that this dig might also unleash a few disturbed spirits ready to turn edith's estate into a gothic haunted house no such luck alas 
the only spectres here are the ghosts of Miramax prestige projects past okay so interesting quality of vocabulary again I think the vocabulary is quite high I think the article is very very colorful it's very creative and it's very high level of English but I hope and I think that you will enjoy to analyze and to understand so here is the text and it remember a widow so basically yesterday we explained the significance of a widow when the person dies and typically it's masculine and feminine so typically when the couple they are married and the man dies the husband dies typically the woman is the widow so the widow is the name of the woman who continues to live when the husband passes away or when the husband dies and i think it's only feminine i don't think it's a, i don't think it's accepted or possible to say the man is a widow i could be wrong but the majority of the time it's more typical for the feminine case okay um of some taste and around has hired okay so the next vocabulary is to hire and i just want to use my notes here just to show you and i'll make this a little bit bigger so everybody can see so the verb is to hire and it has the same significance to contract okay to hire to contract or to employ they're the typical verbs that we use for to hire and um, so you need to be very very clear with the difference also we have a word which is high the adjective it's very high the price is high and the comparative higher so the pronunciation is practically the same between to hire and higher so that's just to be conscious and to be aware of the difference the pronunciation is practically the same the spelling is a little different and the significance is different okay so here it's the contract and um, has hired a local man so she has contracted she has employed a local man um, to help her look at any potential findings so potential is very important because I think in Espanol potential is like power so if the person has a lot of potential in Espanol or Portuguese it's a lot of power but in English potential is possibility so this area has a lot of potential this area has a lot of uh, possible opportunities for the future this football player he is very young or she is very young but she has a lot of potential she could be fantastic it's possible she could be amazing football player so she has a lot of potential okay so the difference between power and potential in English I think it's a false friend in Spanish okay and um, the gentleman is not an archaeologist so this is very very interesting for the grammar remember not is typical for the verb the negative verb I am not I do not like I do not have so the verb not also the adjective not happy not tired so not is typical for the verb and typical for the adjective okay and also no is possible for the substantive or the noun that's the big difference between not and no so not with the adjective not happy not tired not hungry no with the substantive no time no energy no food no uh, look okay that's a big difference and here it's the verb archaeologist the pronunciation of the ch is very important okay so this is an example of irregular phonetics with english the ch we have lots of different words with ch one example is stomach church and ache there are three examples with the ch that are completely different so the ch here is like a k stomach so it's almost the same significance as k for pronunciation stomach and this is different completely church so the ch is completely different sound here church stomach and ache so this is also like a k and the significance of ache is like pain dolor in espanol so you have a headache you have a toothache you have a back ache pain in your back pain in your head pain in your tooth so you can see the pronunciation of the ch is very very important in english and different and irregular so here it's R, it's like a K, archaeologist. And because the substantive begins with a vowel A, it's necessary the article is AN. Remember apple, an apple, and here archaeologist, it's necessary AN. As is very flexible. 
So remember, as is possible, like, because, and while. Okay, so as is possible, like, it's possible because, and it's possible while. Okay, and here, um, it's probably the significance while, which in Spanish is mientras. In Portuguese, I don't know. And obviously in Vietnamese, Thai, Indonesian, I'm not sure exactly. But um, here, it's the significance while. To point out is like to identify. So if you look at the situation and you identify a problem, you think there is something incorrect and there is something wrong with the problem, you point out the problem. Okay, so to point out is to identify a problem or to identify usually negative. So you point out the problem, you point out the, the, the difficult area, you point out. Okay, merely is very, very good vocabulary and it's an adverb because it's L-Y with the suffix, so it's a typical adverb, but it is very important, and um, mere basics is possible, so it really means just or only. So I have the mere basics is a little advanced, and the significance is I have just the basics, only the basics, okay? So it is advanced, it's very good quality English, and you could say I have merely 10 minutes. And the significance here is I have just 10 minutes, I have only 10 minutes. So it is very advanced, very good vocabulary, and very good example of difficulty with English. So I have merely 10 minutes, it has the significance, I have only 10 minutes, I have just 10 minutes. Okay? So very, very good. So he's merely an amateur, has the significance, he's just an amateur, he's only an amateur. So it's emphasis. Excavator with a deep knowledge of history. And again, you need to be clear with the difference between history and story. I think I have mentioned this before in previous classes, but history, the first part, is typical the subject in school. So you study mathematics, you study geography, you study history. So uh, Bolivia has a history, the country has a history, Peru has a great history. It's in the past, okay? So there's a big difference between the history in the past and the story. Okay, the second one is the story. So for example, from the weekend, now I have a lot of stories from the weekend. I have a story about you. I have a story to tell. So there's a big difference between story and history. So you need to be very, very sure and recognize the use in English because it is different. Very, very important, okay? Shyness, so this is a good example, the difference between the adjective and the substantive. So the adjective is shy. Like timid, it's also possible in English, timid. So I know in Espanol and Portuguese it's probably timido. So in English it is possible timid and shy, but the substantive is shyness. Okay, so just be careful. And that's another very good example of the suffix which represents the substantive. Okay, so really, really good example and very important. And also, again, the next example is modesty. So modesty is the substantive and modest is the adjective. Modesty is the noun and modest is the adjective. Also, we have another word in English, humble. The person is very humble. So it's like arrogant is the opposite. The person is very arrogant, very rude, and the person is very humble. Humilde in Espanol. So the person is very humble and humildad in Espanol is humility. So you need to be clear always the difference between the substantive and the adjective. So humility uh, is the noun and humble is the adjective. Okay. And we also have an expression to eat humble pie. That's a very famous idiom and a very famous expression to eat humble pie. So if you think everything is correct, you think your method is correct, you are very confident and very happy. But in the end, you are wrong. In the end, you are incorrect. So you need to apologize. You need to accept your error. And you need to eat humble pie. So obviously, it's a metaphor to say sorry and to admit that you are wrong and to admit that you were incorrect. Okay, so to eat humble pie is a very typical idiom. Okay, um, very good. And seemingly... Okay, so here's another very good quality structure of the verb. So the verb is to seem, and seemingly, I think, is the adjective, also in the adverb. So I think here it's possibly the adverb because the ending is L-Y. 
okay but it's from the verb to seem which is parather in espanol and the next example is another example of the suffix less so remember jobless homeless um endless has a significance without a job without a home or without an end so endless is without an end okay endless so the virus the pandemic is endless the situation is endless there's no end it's continues and continues and continues okay supply i want to identify this word because the verb is to supply the substantive is a supply and the opposite is to demand and the demand it's very typical for economics so also in the restaurant or the business or the company you control you have your business you have your company and for example it's a restaurant so you need to contract the company for food you need to contract the company for material so the company supply you with the material the company supply you with the food that's the significance of the supply but you demand so demand is to want it's a very typical economic term supply and demand okay so the substantive is a supplier the company that gives you the product is the supplier so very important for business very important for um company for professional situations so the supplier is the company that provides you with the material provides you with the equipment and the products okay so very very good vocabulary and very important in english supply and demand and the next part is very 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 difficult okay so a speck i think you can say a speck of dirt a speck of dirt is just a little so on my jacket i have a small speck of tomato ketchup i have a small speck of chocolate so the speck is like a little okay and here it's the adjective speck is adjective tweed is vocabulary of the material you know the typical jacket for the suit the traje in espanol you have a jacket and you have a tweed jacket so tweed is the material with the stereotype of the university lecturer has the jacket with the tweed material and just to show you the translation for tweed i'm going to use here the dictionary because it's a very good dictionary and you can see in bulgarian in arabic in chinese dutch french so it's very similar in other languages hungarian italian i don't believe that's correct it's impossible that's the same word in every language it could be correct but i don't believe it let me check wow so according to the dictionary it's the same word in every language but i really don't believe that that's incredible <laughs> but maybe it's true so here it's um tweed jacket so i'll go back to the explanation and again a suit so a suit is typical for business the woman can wear a suit the man can wear a suit with a shirt a tie a jacket and trousers but it's also flexible because we have the word track suit okay so a track suit is related to athletics so you have the track in athletics like the pista in espanol the athletics track so a track suit is typical adidas nike new balance it's the clothes you wear that's the same concept of a business of business clothes but it's for exercise and that's the reason we say a track suit also we have the verb to suit and it's very very common for example six o'clock suits you eight o'clock suits you this restaurant suits you and i think it's connected to the suit because you try the suit and it's good for you or it's bad for you it's comfortable it's it suits me that's the significance but in relation to the time six o'clock suits me it's good for me it fits me it's comfortable this restaurant is comfortable with me it fits me it suits me okay and the adjective is suitable so very 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 common vocabulary very very important and the negative is unsuitable okay negative adjective so very good vocabulary and that's just the example of this page and now we can continue to the next chapter the next part so i'll go to the next page so edith feels so here's an example of the modal verb maybe so her estate maybe so remember may has the same possibility might could so no problem the significance is possibility but the next verb is the infinitive to be to go and it's necessary to eliminate to 
that's the reason we have may be and not may to be because it's a modal verb okay home to it's a good combination Ireland is home to bad weather well Ireland is home to special weather Ireland is home to a lot of people so home to is the typical combination and the typical connection okay um, so the next part is very important even older so this word even in Espanol is incluso but to explain in other languages um, incluso in Espanol and it's like emphasis so I go to the party everybody is going to the party even Juan even John is going to the party so it's emphasis that everybody's going to the party even John that's one example um, it's for emphasis but there's another typical example even numbers which is a little difficult and a little different so the typical numbers 2 4 6 8 10 they are even numbers and the opposite 1 3 5 7 9 they are odd numbers so if everything's very even it's very equal so for example if you give me a favor and I return the favor everything is even so even is the same it's equal okay and it's possible to say even Stevens which is very informal but the significance is it's everything is the same it's very informal conversation even Stevens okay so even numbers are two four six eight but the opposite are odd numbers which are one two sorry one three five and the word odd is very important because it has the significance a little different because even is good even is equal and odd is a little strange so we can say the, the food is a little odd the restaurant is a little odd the music is a little odd a little strange or even a person or a situation is a little odd okay so odd for an adjective is very very important and here we have even odd so it is a verb as well to even the score is a verb so the score is one zero so you need to equal the score or to even the score so it is very very important there's a phrasal verb to even out so at the start of the year you have bad luck you have a lot of bad luck at the start of the year but by the end of the year everything will even out you have good luck so it's a balance so it is very very important to even out and also just the word even like including incluso in espanol lurking is very very good vocabulary so he thinks something like more even older is lurking under there so the verb to lurk is similar to the verb to creep so yesterday last week we explained the concept creep if you return late from the party you return home late from the party and you try to enter very quietly the house very secret so you creep into the house very quiet but usually it has a negative significance on social media if the person is creeping on another person they are looking they are investigating but very secret so to creep is negative and lurk is very very similar so for example behind me somebody is lurking behind me so I cannot see the person directly I do not know for certain but I have the sensation that somebody is lurking behind me they are standing behind me they are they are watching so to lurk is that action like behind you looking but very quiet but they probably will do some action okay so here he thinks something is under the the, the tree um, but possibly dangerous okay it's typical for the animals that animal is lurking so he is waiting and waiting and waiting to attack okay very very advanced vocabulary very good quality English and very very good uh, example posh okay very famous word in Espanol is pico so the person is very posh the area is very posh the restaurant is very posh the food is very posh very fancy so you can say posh or fancy and it's just an adjective okay I don't there's no substantive well maybe you could say the posh but it's creative and there's no verb so it's just the adjective posh okay so here they say posh accents Um, bump against so the sentence is posh accents bump against working class ones so remember the verb to bump is like to hit so I bump my head I hit my head on the road when you are driving in the car you have the bump so the car and goes over the bump okay bump on your head if I am pregnant and I have the baby I have a bump 
okay but it is a verb to bump into somebody if i bump into somebody the significance is to hit okay somebody and also we have bumper cars and in the amusement park in the in the place where you enter with the roller coaster the um, theme park or the amusement park you have the roller coaster montana rusa and you have the bumper car so the bumper car is the activity in the theme park that the car hits you know the activity and on the car you have a bumper on the car so two cars on the street and parking you try to park and slow 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 and then the bumper hits the car so it's the outside of the car is the bumper but to bump into is like to meet unexpectedly so i bump into my friend it's possible literal physical but it's also possible you meet unexpectedly so yesterday i walked in the city center and i ran into or i bumped into my friend and the significance is to meet you can also say run into or just to meet okay unexpectedly so very important um and with the p a bumper on the car typical okay so here the posh accent con combines or connects or impacts against the working class ones and here you can see ones and this is a substitution of the accents okay so it's not necessary to repeat accents you can say ones so here we have the subject they eventually is the adverb connected to discover so they eventually discover but do is emphasis so here do is normally activity i do the homework i do the exercise but it is possible before another verb for emphasis for example i like chocolate but i do like chocolate it has the significance i really like chocolate okay so here it's just emphasis so they eventually discover has the same significance they eventually do discover quite is a lot quite happy quite tired quite hungry bastante in espanol so quite happy a lot rather so you've three words that you can say for quite quite rather and pretty okay <laughs> so <clears throat> we have three words and the significance is before the adjective quite happy rather happy pretty happy has exactly the same significance remember pretty has the significance quite but also pretty has the significance beautiful or attractive so pretty has two significance the first significance is is quite and the second significance is very attractive rather has the significance quite but also rather it's possible i would rather and the significance is i would prefer okay so i would rather has the significance i would prefer rather than has the significance instead of so rather than going to the cinema we go to the restaurant rather than yellow i want red rather than has the significance instead of rather than and the pronunciation the th rather okay and impossible in ireland rather as i said with the pronunciation with the th like a d that's the second significance and um, prefer instead of and bastante so rather is very important and here it's quite and then a trove of corroded uh, so a trove is difficult vocabulary and it's advanced and typically it's with a treasure trove that's the typical typical context treasure is tesoro or tesura i think so the pirate when the ship sinks and the ship has the uh, treasure so the trove of treasure is like a collection or a find of treasure okay so here they say a trove of books a trove of televisions it's it's not typical in that situation but you understand the significance is a lot a big collection a trove of and in this case it's a trove of centuries old flotsam and jetsam so this is very very strange vocabulary okay but it is possible flotsam very specific and jetsam and i think it's related to the ship okay so first i need to teach the vocabulary uh, the verb to wreck okay and we have a ship wreck so this is very very interesting the verb to wreck is like to destroy and it's typical for the ship so if the ship is wrecked the significance is the ship is destroyed you can say my car is wrecked okay and the significance is my car is destroyed also you can say i am wrecked 
at the end of the day you are very tired and you are wrecked okay so you are very very tired um, and also with Miley Cyrus uh, the song the famous song when Miley Cyrus is on the ball and she is swinging that ball is a wrecking ball because it destroys the building it it demolishes the building so a shipwreck is a substantive for the ship that is destroyed typically at the bottom of the ocean you have the shipwreck okay and the material from the ship specifically is called flotsam and jetsam it's not common it's very 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 specific vocabulary i have only seen this expression maybe a few times in my life so it's not so common but to wreck is very important and a shipwreck is very important and informal i am wrecked means i am very very tired and i think it's probably more informal it means tired okay and that is the significance of a shipwreck and you can see the vocabulary flotsam and jetsam um, and then they continue in that sentence no uh, which sorry which attracts the attention so no problem and uh, no less than the British Museum is just more emphasis so the British Museum is obviously very reputable very prestigious and no less than is just colorful vocabulary to emphasize the importance of the reputation of the British Museum and remember attract the attention it's possible to draw attention so you attract attention has the same significance to draw attention okay and remember draw is extract and attract but also the painting there are two significances for draw so draw attention has the same significance to attract attention okay good and um, here is an example of the conditional a very complicated example of the conditional so the treasure where this not lifted is like the same example as if so where this not to be the case where this not lifted so it's the significance of if it's the conditional if but here we have the verb lifted and lift has two significances so to lift is physical i lift the baby i lift the table physical lift number one the second significance is to rob or to steal a little informal so if the thief or the robber enters the building and they lift the product the significance is to steal or to rob okay steal or to rob probably informal to lift it's typical in the movies he was lifted means the police arrested him or her okay um, and in this case i think the significance is stolen from the the ship or taken from the ship okay so it's very very good conversational vocabulary and the next part is uh, there's the conditional so you would this part is connected to the conditional where this not lifted so this is an example of the conditional so basically where this not uh, is the significance if this was not so that's the connected with the conditional you would it's more advanced hope that this dig and remember yesterday the significance of dig escavar and we have a lot of phrasal verbs with dig dig out dig up okay so dig is very important unleash so this is very very good vocabulary unleash a few disturbed spirits so first a leash when you have the dog when you bring the dog for a walk you have the collar and you have the leash so the leash is the cable for the dog when you bring for a walk so the significance to un negative unleash is to release or to liberate so the dog is on the leash that's the typical preposition the dog is on the leash okay and the significance the opposite is to unleash so to unleash is to liberate or to set free okay so to unleash is very important and it is common vocabulary it's very very good is to release or to liberate and that's the significance here like to release or to liberate a few disturbed spirits here we have a phrasal verb again the verb to turn in the car turn left turn right turn around but when you say turn into it's a phrasal verb to transform so superman is clark kent he's the original person clark kent and clark kent when there is an emergency turns into superman okay 
Uh, Batman, I forget Batman's original name, but the original person for Batman, he turns into Batman. And the significance is to convert or to transform. So today, this morning, the weather was very bad. But finally, the day, the weather turned into a very good day. So very, very important phrasal verb. The significance to transform um, is to turn into. Okay, here we see the possession, Brian's pen, Edith's estate. It's the possession, it's the estate of Edith. Okay, haunted house is good vocabulary as well. So a haunted house is the adjective and the verb is to haunt. And it's related to a ghost. A ghost is a phantasma in Latin or Spanish or Portuguese. A phantasma is a ghost. And the action or the verb of the ghost, the ghost can haunt the person. The ghost can haunt the building. It's like stay and scare and frighten. So the adjective is haunted house. Okay. Um, for example, in your life, if you make an error and you have a regret, the regret or the action or the activity can haunt you because you constantly, constantly think about it. It stays in your in your memory. So it's possible metaphorically for your actions or for something you regret. Okay. Um no such look so every obviously everybody understands look look is the adjective uh, uh sorry substantive and the adjective is lucky and you need to be careful with the difference because this is a very very common confusion so look is the substantive and lucky is the adjective and this is a very common error so you have the verb to have substantive i have look but the verb to be is with the adjective so with the verb to be we say to be lucky, okay? So look is the substantive and lucky is the adjective, okay? Um, I see we have Chris connected. That could be my friend from London. I'm not sure, it could be a little joke, but you need to be careful with the difference between look and lucky, the substantive and the adjective, okay? Alas is very formal and it probably means finally. So it's very formal and old English and the significance is finally. Um, alas, very, very formal significance for finally, okay? And a spectre is very proficient vocabulary. I have never seen this word before my, myself, but the significance is a uh, like a ghost or a spirit, okay? Well done. So that's very, very good vocabulary, a good explanation today of the uh, vocabulary and the grammar. Now is an opportunity to practice some speaking. So if you want, I think we've, uh, it's just Chris, so maybe we can connect to Chris. If you want to participate with the speaking, just put a comment or raise your hand on Zoom and we can connect with the speaking. That's a possibility. Um, and the alternative is we continue with the phrasal verbs and we continue with the list of idioms. Okay, so this list is a list of phrasal verbs and you are probably familiar with this list every day we try to continue a little with the list and yesterday we start saturday we stopped with the significance to go without so to go without has the significance to survive or to live you can go without chocolate you can go without food the significance is to survive or to live number one and that was where we stopped on saturday and the next example is to grow under, okay? And in my opinion, this is not typical because for a business, we normally say to go under. So for example, the business uh, goes under is the present significance, and it's like bancarrota in Espanol, collapse, bankrupt in English, okay? So you can say bankrupt, and that's the significance to go under, and it's possible in the past went under, but here we have grow under, and for me it's not very common, but the example is the word, yeah, it should be go. So it's probably a mistake. It's not grow, it should be go under. So the restaurant went under after uh, the problem. So to go under has the significance to lose business or to close because of business, okay? The next page, we will continue with go and well sorry grow so grow up this is very important in relation to children and in relation to business because the error is typical in business i have heard many many times the confusion and the error to grow and to grow up so in the company it's possible to grow in the company it's possible to progress 
to develop and to grow but the second possibility with the phrase of our grow up is only really for mature so it's possible a little insult if you tell the person to grow up it has the significance to mature or to behave or to act correctly to act more uh, your age so to grow up is to mature and grow is more in the company so the error the strange sentence is to grow up in the company that's not typical it's a common error but that's the difference between grow in the company and grow up okay hand so the verb to obviously the substantive is your hand but it is possible a verb to hand I hand you the keys I hand you the information I hand you the book and the significance is to give okay and um, also the structure or the sentence um, is possible that you give somebody a hand okay so the sentence is to give me a hand has the significance to give me some help okay so to give me a hand has the significance to give me help and here we have the phrase of verb to hand back so the hand back is returned you go to the library you borrow the book and you have to hand back the book okay has the significance to give back hand down has two significances okay so hand down my memory my instinct hand down is typical in family so you have the brother the older brother has the clothes the very fashionable clothes and the young brother wants the clothes and the young brother needs the clothes so the old brother hands the clothes down to the brother only clothes but it's possible technology or the product so to hand down is to give to the younger person and the substantive is a hand down or you can say a hand me down um, and that's the significance term for a product or clothes that you receive from your older brother or your older sister okay so it is possible to hand down and the second example of hand down is typical in the court or in the law so the judge it's very typical in the context of the judge the judge hands down the punishment the judge hands down the sentence and the significance is to give the punishment or to give the sentence okay so here you can see the two examples the president is going to hand down his decision on health care tonight mm, yeah for me it's more typical in the court for the judge you hand down a sentence or you hand down the punishment okay and the second example is the same example I repeated when my clothes get too small so remember too is for excessive too tired too happy too small for me as a child I handed them down to my sister okay hand in is very typical in school when you finish your project you have to hand in the project you have to hand in the document like to submit or to send hand in the information or when you leave your job hand in your keys hand in your documents so to give or to submit okay hand out is very literal because you have the material and you hand out you distribute okay so all very very logical with the prepositions hand in is to return or to give hand back is the same and hand down is related to the age and hand out is to distribute the final example is control if you have control of the company and you hand over control to another person the significance is to give the control so to hand over the control or in relation to a robbery if the man or the woman has the pistol they can say hand over the money hand over the jewelry and the significance is to give over so there's very good examples and very good contexts with the verb to hand with the preposition okay hang so the verb to hang in espanol is colgar for the clothes you hang your jacket you hang your hat so that's the first one hang colgar for clothes it's typical for the telephone hang up the telephone because the original telephone was very big and it was necessary the position to hang up the telephone number two and we have an expression with football to hang up your boots has the significance to retire so the boots are the football boots so to hang up your boots has the significance to finish and to retire and to stop playing football for example um, so to hang up is with the telephone and also the clothes to hang up and um, that's number two and here we have hang around so around is the preposition so if you hang it means you're waiting you're very relaxed you have nothing to do 
because the opposite is tension. Think of the rope. The rope has lots of tension, but if the rope is hanging, there is no tension and it's free and it has uh, a lot of freedom. So if you hang around, you're waiting, you have nothing to do, you are looking to relax and socialize, hanging around to stay. Okay? And here is the example. Maria and Salvador usually hang around the beach after school. They usually spend time socializing, relaxing after the beach to hang around or to hang out. Very, very similar. Hang around and hang out. Okay? Um, good. And hang up is for the clothes, no problem. Hang up the jacket because it's positioned usually in the wardrobe up. So hang up the jacket, that's no problem. And then the telephone, <coughs> no problem. A hangout is socialized as well. Okay, very, very good. So that is very nice um, example. And Chris, if you want to participate, it's possible now. You can just send me a message to confirm that you want to uh, practice. If not, no problem. I think that is sufficient and good work for today. Um, and hopefully everything will be clear and you understand. Remember, this is all free and it's a good opportunity for me. But it would be a great help if you want to contribute and to support me. It will be very, very good for me because this is my activity at the moment and your help would really be a great boost and a great support for me and it will allow me, it will permit me to continue working in this way. So probably I really need your financial support and your financial help of maybe one euro in Europe or in Asia. It's obviously a different translation or in South America. Um, it would be great for me because it would allow me to continue and thank you very much to the people who have contributed in the last month it's a big help for me and i'm very grateful and delighted that you supported me with your small contribution and i'm really really grateful so thank you to the people who have supported me and for everybody um you can contact and you can contribute to support me as well okay mask i see if you want to wait there we will connect at the end if you want and um that is the the information that you need from Bizoom, Revolut, PayPal, or the bank details as well. Um, so hopefully you can keep me in mind for this, okay? So that is everything. We also have social media. If you want to connect with social media, we have Instagram, we have Twitter, and we have YouTube are possible as well for social media to connect. So I hope we had a few people uh, attending the class this morning. I hope it was clear. I hope you understand me, and I hope there was a benefit for you and i look forward to continuing this week tomorrow at more or less the same time approximately and hopefully and we will continue to work it's difficult and the classes might be difficult but i hope they help a little bit so thank you very much everybody have a great day and talk to you soon take care